Good morning. Another chilly morning here in Bakersfield, California. About 36 degrees. Walking down the newly minted 24th Street. It's November, I believe, 29th. Almost December. This is another race week, which is nice to say because of COVID. Of course, my other two races were just a 10 miler and a couple half marathoners. Half marathons, and I can't talk with the cold. Um, but uh, this week, I'm kind of doing an ultra of sorts. Not really going ultra distance, but it's 26 miles, one mile an hour for 26 hours. It's part of the Bakersfield Marathon virtual race where you can run the marathon in pieces or all together or do one mile an hour around the clock. Of course, here in California, we have a curfew. So I guess I'm supposed to do it on the treadmill. Probably gonna do it on the treadmill anyways because it's actually below freezing this weekend, next weekend that is. Supposed to be in the 30, 31, 30 degrees. So, saw an article about going back to racing after a long layoff, which many of us have done because of COVID. And one of the first things they said was visualization is really good. Kind of visualize yourself competing in the race leading up to it. Uh, the one gal said she likes to more visualize how she's handling the competition more than worrying about splits and things like that. So that's definitely something I will be thinking about. Not really competing against anybody, but just visualizing, putting in the effort and being in the present and getting it done. Along with visualization, you gotta trust your instincts and trust yourself. You know, you've been there before, you've done it. And so you gotta realize that like, you'll rise to the occasion um, like I did the other day at the uh, run with the burrows and raced in months and months. But once you get out there, get the juices flowing, you just have to you know, remember that, okay, I know how to do this. I know how to push. I know how to uh, you know, be a competitive and just rely on what you've done in the past. And then hopefully possibly change some things that you did in the past that might not have worked. So this is a good opportunity to change old habits that didn't work and stick with the ones that did. And there's the John's Burger where back in March I had my fall. Right here is where the grease is. You can see there's still some there, but I fell, couldn't walk for six weeks. Ended up at the hospital at the end of April with this, uh, ended up being diagnosed with congestive heart failure. Uh, one of the things they talk about in the article when you're doing a race that you haven't done in a while, He's ironing out the wrinkles before the race. You know, with half marathons and things like that, I don't really have to do too much with that. But obviously with this upcoming 26 miles, mile an hour for 26 hours, unfortunately, these guys just trash the shit out of this place. Um, is I've got to figure out what course I'm going to do, uh, what I'm going to eat, and also, uh, you know, the course I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do, am I gonna do some of it on my treadmill? I'd rather do it all outdoors. So I'm actually thinking I have a one mile loop for my house and I may use my car and just hang out in my car in between loops. Not every loop, obviously. Sometimes I'll come in the house, hang out there, but I just gotta go through logistics and try and decide what I'm going to eat, when I'm gonna eat, what shoes I'm gonna wear, what clothing I'm going to wear, because like I said, it's going to be cold here. It's going to be in the freezing temperatures. I mean, I know a lot of you around the world are laughing at me right now, thinking I would take 30 degrees or zero Celsius any day of the week. But to me, it's cold. So lots of logistics, but that's all things you need to think about when going back to a race, racing that you might not have done for some time. And um, there's my old Smart and Final, where I get many of my race day supplies. Just finished up an 80 minute mugging. I give names to the different kinds of run walks I do. Uh, you've probably seen Chug, which is five minute walk, five minute run right from the get go. Um, then there's the Pug, which I kind of came up with since my wife started walking with me years ago. And so I will do 45 minutes with her. And then on any given day, depending on what day of the week it is, how close the race is, 
I'm doing anywhere from 60 minutes to 100 minutes in the mornings. I used to do a lot more miles, but I'm really trying to back off on my mileage. So that's the uh, pug is whatever's left over when I've done a workout with her. So on an 80 minute day, I might do 45 minute walk with her and then 35 minutes of run walk. And then today, since yesterday I did a chug because she didn't get up. I uh, try not to do two chugs in a row, a little bit too much running. So I have a new one called a mug. I used to call it the dirty run where, you know, today was 80 minutes. I used to uh, walk 40 minutes, run, walk the last 40 minutes and run, walk means five minute walk, five minute run. And uh, I used to call it dirty because, you know, I was mixing it up, but I think I'm gonna call it mug uh, just keep the theme pug, chug, and mug. That way I can just easily look at my Strava training peaks and go, oh, that's what you did today. And uh, on to the theme about getting back into racing after a long layoff. You know, obviously here it's more because they've just been canceled. Is one of the things they said in the article was just appreciate what you have and the ability to go out and do what you do. And like for me, I go out every morning, every evening, and do what I'm doing right now. Right now, I'm on Elm Street, nightfall on Elm Street. This is where I often train in the evenings because it's quiet, fairly well lit. And so just appreciate the fact that you're healthy enough to race and that there's a race that you can do and that you have the opportunities to do that. So definitely appreciate it. Another thing they said, which kind of didn't really go in line with the uh, rest of the article when they said, you know, study the course, which, you know, I guess maybe you forget to do that. I, of course, am trying to figure out a course because this is a virtual race. And of course, when I do, you know, real races, I try and learn them as much as possible if I haven't been on them already. And so those are some of the things to look at in terms of getting ready for an upcoming race. And the last part of the article was trust your fitness. I know many of you who've been, you know, the past eight or nine months, you probably were really motivated at the beginning and maybe you've fallen off. But if you've stuck to it, you got to realize that, you know, you've been making gains. And if not fitness wise, just, you know, taking a break sometimes is good, especially so many people, as I kind of talk about often, just race way too much. And so kind of a benefit and you see it because when people are racing, they're doing quite well, you know, not doing this constant every weekend, half marathon and beyond, and actually doing some training, maybe getting healthy, doing like myself, uh, doing some prehab work or rehab work and getting yourself into race day mindset. But, you know, look at your training, compare it to what you did in the past, and hopefully you'll have a successful race and I'm looking forward to doing this one this coming Friday in Bakersfield. And as always, stay healthy, be boring, not epic.